Hello, this is Ian Henry, Auto Analysis. Welcome to the first analyst briefing of 2011, looking at the production outlook for Europe. First of all, a quick look at the economic situation. We have a mixture of issues here, continued economic uncertainty, rising oil prices, the risk of overheating in the East, the fact that the UK economy itself contracted in Q4, and the fear of a double-dip recession still stalking Europe. Nonetheless, the IMF still expects 4% growth or more globally, and one of the consequences of this is that Europe's economies in general, when the vehicle companies and suppliers in particular, need to focus their efforts on the East. This is where the opportunities for growth and recovery will come from. There are problems within the EU that need addressing, and the viability of the euro has itself been questioned from time to time last year. In the automotive market, the scrappage schemes that which benefited manufacturers has now come to an end and sales growth will really return to normal drivers. There will be a short-term fall in German sales but the vehicle manufacturers will nonetheless be pinning their hopes on an near-term recovery in Germany which drives so much of the European market. We also have concerns about production over capacity in Europe. Only two European plants, GM Antwerp and Fiat Sicily, are closing and the vehicle manufacturers seem to prefer to adjust their manufacturing output and footprint on a marginal basis rather than taking decisive action to cut capacity. We have doubts about the long-term future of the Mitsubishi's Dutch plant now that the Colt is not going to be made there in the future and we also have doubts about some PSA facilities. At the same time we have new capacity coming on stream, Mercedes Hungary is an all new plant, so is Fiat Serbia, Ford's plant in Craiova, Romania will be producing soon and BMW's Leipzig plant has been expanded. And of course this year we will also see the the Chinese come into Europe for the first time. Their plants in Cherry's plant in Turkey, for example, will be in production by the end of the year. Looking at the production outlook for 2011, first of all we need to see that in 2010 there was a recovery from the low of 2009. This started in Q1, it continued into Q2, and indeed by the end of the first half of last year, production across Europe was nearly 9 million, up from just over 7 million in the first half of 2009. We now see a provisional total for 2010 of 18.4 million compared to 16.1 in 2009. This growth was underpinned by strong exports and a range of new models from most of the car companies, which themselves led to major improvements in vehicle company finances. We've already seen Fiat report better than expected profits, and Mercedes, VW and PSA have all reported record global unit sales. 2011 will see the switch of production to smaller vehicles, EVs and hybrids accelerate, and by 2012 market volumes will be close to those of 2007. We do, however, on the back of the economic uncertainty, see slower growth this year to just 18.8 million, but we will see the volumes climb back to over 20 million next year in 2012. Turning now to the vehicle manufacturers, BMW and Daimler. BMW had its second best ever year in volume terms in 2010 and will report strong profit growth. It's on target to meet its tough financial goals by 2012 and it's going to increase its production of small cars, EVs and so forth as part of its plan to reach global production volumes of 2 million vehicles by 2020. It's expanding in China and the USA to balance its production footprint equally between Germany and the rest of the world. It doesn't want Germany long term to produce more than 50% of its volume. Daimler 2 is going to have a strong financial reporting for 2010 expecting profits of in the region of 4 billion euros compared to a loss of last in last year. It too is reorientating itself towards small cars, especially with its joint venture with Renault. Interestingly, the other news of the Daimler is its decision to partner with Gaz to produce vehicles in Russia, starting with vans. Fiat is accelerating its integration with Chrysler. It's increased its shareholding now to 25%. And as part of its ambitious model and platform sharing plans, the Fiat 500 is now being made in Mexico. Last year saw the unions finally agree to shift production from Poland to Italy and reorganize the Miro Fiori plant to allow Jeep models to be made there going forward, although we have doubts about whether the volumes that have been set for this are achievable. The 300,000 unit a year plant in Serbia will become the center of MPV production following an investment of around 800 million euros. The other news at Fiat is it's going to make a small van for GM in Turkey and it's expanding in Brazil. At Ford, the main news concerns the production of the new Focus, which has started in Germany. This is a global model which we made at more than six plants around the world. It's also secured union agreement regarding the future of the Genk plant. Interestingly, the Transit Connect, which is currently made in Turkey and is gradually going to shift production to Romania, is one of three candidates to become the new New York taxi. And this could either boost new model production volumes at Cryova in Romania or actually lead to US production of the vehicle.
The new GM Europe is proceeding well with its restructuring, but it's still likely to be loss-making in 2011, but it has a clear strategy in place for Europe. It has a new premium small car plan now to be made in Eisenach, and it's expanded engine production in Hungary and Germany. As part of an export drive, the Russell-Sign plant is building the insignia for sale under the Buick Regal name in the States, and it's free capacity in Spain by switching to the Combo replacement to the Fiat plant in Turkey. Hopefully Luton's future will be secured and hopefully too the Ampera will be confirmed for the UK production. Honda, there's no change to its situation. It will continue with production arrangements as now. The Hyundai Kia Russian factory is now in full production mode and as detailed in the main report, the company plans to swap production of different models between its Czech and Slovak plants to balance production volumes. Mitsubishi in Europe's main concern really is the future of the Bourne factory. We see this in great doubt following the decision not to make the new cult there. We believe that there will be some PSA and Mitsubishi crossover vehicles made, but this is far from certain. PSA itself is in a strong financial position. It set global sales records in 2010, and 2011 will see increased focus on hybrids, EVs, and it's moving up market with the Citroen DS brand. Its cooperation with Mitsubishi will deepen, especially in EVs and crossovers. Renault, Nissan, and Dacia. The commitment to EVs is becoming stronger here with the Fluence EV in production already and plans to make the leaf in Europe becoming closer. Its future in large cars and MPVs, however, remains unclear. Its joint venture with Daimler will be very important in its new mid-term plan, although the details have yet to be clarified. Nissan UK reported record production in 2010 and Nissan Spain has confirmed it will invest in van and pickup production in its Barcelona factory. We had thought that the Barcelona factory was vulnerable to closure. This appears now to be quite safe. All three UK plants at Tata, Jaguar Land Rover will be retained, and JLR was itself profitable for the first half of last year, and its financial position has undoubtedly been boosted by a contract to supply up to 40,000 vehicles in China. It's in the middle of an ambitious new model program with the Range Rover Evoque, the first of many models that will appear in the next few years. It will be producing in China within three years, and Indian CKD assembly started the in the end of last year. Toyota still has many recall problems that are affecting the company globally. We don't expect there to be much change in this situation in the short term. Europe is not the centre of Toyota's near-term plans and its focus is still in Japan and the US. Volkswagen Group. Here it reported record sales in 2010, reaching over 7 million units for the first time. Russia, China and the entire Asia-Pacific region grew by nearly 40% in the middle of a 52 billion euro investment program at the moment and that actually includes the problems at SEAT where 5 billion euros will be invested to turn this plant around. It will obtain additional capacity in Russia through its partnership with Gaz. Its Kaluga factory has already been deemed to be insufficient to meet its sales targets. Looking at some other vehicle manufacturers, Geely, uh, which now owns Volvo, well here we see that the new model program is still awaiting some clarification, but we believe there will be a small SUV, the XC30, which will appear within the next couple of years. But the, the key issue at Volvo is what is going to happen with the S40 and V50 replacements. Volvos will also be made in China, and we expect that Geely would ultimately produce in Europe as well. Here in the UK, Sayak will produce in low volume uh, some MGs this year, and Cherry's factory in Turkey is now under construction. We have doubts about the viability of Saab as an independent company, but if it can indeed produce as many 9.3s as it thinks it will, then it could survive, but we have to question whether it has the distribution and market image to, to sustain over 100,000 units of annual sales. In conclusion, there was strong production growth in 2010, and this was underpinned by a whole series of new models and the end of the scrappage scheme which boosted sales, plus exports beyond Europe have grown. But even with the new models and continued growth in the East, we expect slower volume growth in 2011 in terms of production. Our outlook assumes no double-dip recession. We remain cautiously optimistic, but we're very wary of the economic uncertainty. Europe's sovereign debt and other financial problems seem to have been averted, but we're not yet sure whether this has been a permanent solution. We think the key issue overhanging the automotive industry in Europe is the overcapacity problem which we still do not think has been adequately addressed. Decisions have been delayed and the structural costs of having so many plants is a big issue which we think will come back to haunt the industry. The full production outlook report is now available to download from the SMMT website by following the links shown on this page. Thank you for listening.